Okay, so here we are on the inside of the 2019 uh, Honda CRV, and we're going to be talking about the infotainment center. So this is uh, the display itself is you know cl close to foot long. The actual screen itself is uh, probably about a uh, seven inch screen here. It, it is all uh, touch control except for your volume and your audio button. Okay, so we are on the uh, home screen here. And on the home screen, you have a bunch of different uh, options here. We have navigation, phone settings, etc. All you need to do is click on one of these uh, to go to it. So if I want to go to navigation, I click on it. Here I am in the menu for navigation. Click the back button here to get back. There we go. Let's go. I do not have a phone connected, so nothing will show up. But if you had a phone connected, um, this is where you would see one. This is also where you could pair your phone. I'm just going to go back again. So it's basically taking two clicks on the back button to, to go back. Uh, I can go into settings. There's quite a few things in here, like setting your clock, uh, general info. Uh, your different your camera settings, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi settings, smartphone, um, other phone connections, audio, your system, and your vehicle. So let's go into a few of these, and the rest of them will work the same way. Okay. For instance, uh, if you want to set your clock, click on clock, and then you can adjust the wallpaper type, adjust the clock itself. Do the auto time zone, which I would recommend leaving on. And then you can see that there is uh, some more area to go down. So you can go on here and change like the clock format, the clock display is on, overlay the clock location if you don't want it where it currently is in the top right. You can click there and it says location of clock when apps are in use may be temporarily dragged to another screen corner. So. Um, you can you can do that and you could say well I want it on the lower left when that happens so if you have an app that that, that needs kind of that corner of the space up there it'll move the clock down here all right to go back again it's just the back button okay let's go into system here so under system settings you can edit oops that's not the one I want it you can edit your home screen uh, order. So if you want things to show up in a different order in that original menu, you can change those. And then go into system. Okay, I can do, then I can set other things like configuration of instrument panel. Okay, so I can edit the order of things. Like here, here's the order that's going to show up in your driver's information display in, uh, between the gauges. So be, you know, fuel first, navigation, then driver awareness system, and then you know what as far as your all-wheel drive goes which wheels are actors are actually working right now um, and then a system maintenance kind of a thing all right you can rearrange the order of the way those things appear so put the, your most commonly used ones front and then when you use the button on the steering wheel they'll appear in the order that you put them in I am of course not going to change anything I'm just going to hit the back button here I'm going to hit it back oh, let's see we can go you can change the background color from being blue to being some other color. Let's do red. Hit OK. All right. Now they all turned red. Nice little feature. Touch sensitivity. It's set to low right now. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change it. It says click Next. Click it to high. Guidance volume, text message volume. You can set all these individually. Okay. I'm keep scrolling down here. Verbal reminders are on. Beep volume. You can set that level. Okay. Voice prompt. Song by voice. It'll actually tell you what your um, what song is coming up next. Hey, okay, just a ton of features. I can also click on this tab and go to the home screen. Can go to display. And just change the display settings, the, the color, the touch sensitivity. Okay, here's the brightness, the contrast, and the, and the black level, all of which you can manually adjust. So just a, a huge ways to customize your screen. 
All right, let's go back two more here. And let's go into vehicle. All right, so here you have a lot of your uh, safety systems. So you do have tire pressure monitoring system calibration in case you want to calibrate, you don't think it's on. Our it's, it's reading correctly, you can recalibrate it. The driver assist system, now this is where you have sort of all of your safety, your, a lot of your safety features. Uh, forward collision warning distance, adaptive cruise control, forward vehicle detect beep, <laughs> blind spot info, lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation, and driver attention monitor. All right, now, um, let's see, let's go back um, and let's just click on one of these. So forward collision warning distance. If I click on it, I can do short, normal, or long. And the best thing you can do is drive it and see which one fits you the best. But that's where you would change it. And then wherever you did it, you would just click on it and then click back and it's done. Hey, let's take a look at a few other things here. Um, driver position setup. Now you can program like where your seat goes, uh, you know, where the, um, what, the radio and the climate control. And then that all links to your position, your, your two, two position memory seats. You can set up keyless access, remote start system, turn it on and off, door unlock. You want all the doors to unlock when you hit the power unlock, just some of them. Uh, keyless accent light flash, you can change that. Just, again, just a lot of things. And then we'll just go down here and you also have a door window set up. Uh, power tailgate setup and maintenance information. We'll click on that one last year. Okay, so engine oil, 100% life. Right. The other thing you have on this, I'll keep going back here a minute. All right, is you have some buttons, uh, or some shortcut buttons right here that are always on, like home, map, audio, phone, and of course the back button that we've been doing. And then if you click here, you can change your brightness settings. Right, I had grabbed the wrong spot right here. Oops. All right, and there is your infotainment system. This is the touring trim level. So this particular vehicle uh, does have a 330-watt sound system, nine speakers, including a subwoofer. Um, if you step down to the EXL trim level, that's 180 watts with eight speakers. And if you do, uh, that, that still comes with a nice seven-inch display. And if you go to the LX or the EX, the LX comes with a 160 watt four speaker system and the EX comes with a 180 watt six speaker system. So two additional speakers in EX, uh, but both come then with a five inch display screen instead of the seven inch. Okay. This particular trim level does include uh, the Honda navigation with voice recognition, Honda digital traffic and HD radio. Okay, so we're going to talk about the driver's information center here. And uh, on your steering wheel, you have a bunch of controls. Over here, this circle just has to do with your cruise control. This does have adaptive cruise. So this button here sets the gap. This sets your speed. This is your resume, and that's your cancel button. This main button here, what this does is it turns on your adaptive cruise control and your lane keeping assist. It turns them on together. Okay, and then this one over here will also give you the visual lines for the lane keeping assist right on the dashboard there. I think you can see those there. Yep, you can. Good. All right. Now, as far as what's available in this, if I, I have to hit this information button right here, okay, one, I have to kind of click and hold for a second, and then I can use these left right arrows. And I can scroll. So here's my fuel economy. Here's my navigation. Here's my driver awareness. 
Uh, here's what my all-wheel drive system is doing. Here's any uh, maintenance, uh, system reminders, that kind of thing. Music, uh, your phone, and of course, if you're flipping back and forth between kilometers or miles per hour. Okay, if I go and get another click, it just comes back to that screen. Now, be aware if you do, you can do the left click and go around here too. Okay. So, let's just start real quickly here with fuel economy. Once you get to the icon you want, press enter. And that's what shows up. Hey, there are no other pages to scroll through. That's, that's what you see is what you get. If you do scroll up or down, you get the media infotainment center. Um, and then after a while, it disappears and goes back to your fuel economy. Okay, so I'm now I want to go back to icon. So I'm going to press and hold the info button again. I'll go to the right. Okay, and I'm going to click on navigation. I get a compass for now. I don't have anything plotted in. If I had an actual uh, course on my map, it would then give me uh, directions through your driver's information screen. Go back here. Uh, this is the driver awareness. Hit enter. Okay, this will. Um, Keep track of your driving habits, and if it senses that you're you're not paying attention enough, it'll warn you to take a break. All right. I'm going to go back to my information button to get to the next one. Here's your all-wheel drive system. While you're driving, you can see what it's doing in each area of the of the motor and the transmission and the wheels. Okay. And we'll go over to the wrench symbol here, oil life. Okay, uh, music now tells you what's playing on your media. And you could, of course, make changes using the arrows. So here I've switched the up and down arrows switch between sources. So here's Sirius XM. And then my right left buttons change like channels. All right. Let me go back to the information button here. And I'm going to go to phone. Okay, there's not a phone available. If there was, this is where the information would show up. Back here, and they go to kilometers or miles per hour right here. It says press and hold, enter, to change speed distance accounts. So if I press and hold, I just switch to kilometers per hour up there. I click and hold again, go back to miles per hour. If you double click, if you click, if you just keep clicking on the information button too, you can scroll through the different icons as well. Okay, and that's how to control your driver's information system. I do like the fact that these are LED lights. These are, these are like little LED lights, these red gauges on the side. They're not actually a needle. That's really cool. Okay, so the other a couple buttons I didn't mention are your phone uh, on, your phone off or hang up, and then your volume buttons right here. You also have voice command here for navigation, and uh, we'll, we'll check it out in a little bit, but you should also have, uh, by pressing and holding this, you should, or this one, you should have voice command connection to Siri on your phone because this does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and any car that has that will have access to Siri on an iPhone. All right, there's your driver's information system and your steering wheel controls.